So capacitance is written with a capital C. Unfortunately, right, we've run out of letters and so we have to recycle these things. But you know, that's good for the Earth, recycling. Capacitance C is the following. It's Q over V. Q is a measure of charge. V is a measure of voltage. And a charge over voltage in SI units is something called a farad. It's also the same as a coulomb per volt. Okay, so these are all units over here. One farad is one coulomb per volt. So when you go to the Radio Shack and you say, I need a capacitor, they'll say, what's the capacitance that you want? And it'll be like 10 picofarads or 10 microfarads. Capacitance sounds a lot like capacity. Right? Sounds a lot like that, right? Capacity to do what? Well, it's capacity to store charge. That's what a capacitor is. It's the ability to store charge. Why might you want to do that? Because charge is what powers all sorts of electronic circuits, right? In your smartphone, you have tons of capacitors. And they don't look exactly like the parallel plate capacitor, of course, but this is a great approximation. Parallel plate capacitor stores charge. If I put a whole bunch of charge there, a whole bunch of charge there, I can store that charge. Okay, let's go back to uh, the question 1740 and see if we know enough now to answer it. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. It says an electric field of 8.5 times 10 to the 5 volts per meter is desired between two parallel plates each of area 45 square centimeters and separated by 2.4 millimeters of air. What charge must be on each plate? All right, we need to probably talk just a little bit more before we answer that question. So let's do the following. Let's draw our parallel plate capacitor again. We'll draw the cross-sectional view, not the 3D view. And let's do it like this. I have positives on the left, I have negatives on the right. There is therefore an electric field that is pointing from the positive to the negative. If I put a charge in there and it moves a distance, let's call it delta S, charge Q, what is, and let's call it Q naught, that's our test charge, what is the work that is done on it? Work W equals force times distance times the cosine of theta. Everything's in the same direction here, so it's just going to be force times distance, cosine of zero degrees, just force times distance. The force on charge Q naught is Q naught times E. The distance that we're going to go we said is delta S. But we know something about potential and these quantities. Potential V is equal to the work over the charge. Specifically, delta V is the work over the charge. And so we get Q naught E delta S divided by Q naught. The Q naughts drop out and we get delta V equals E delta S. Good. This one has a high potential. This one has a low potential. The magnitude of the potential difference between those two is just E delta S. Don't worry about whether this should be a, pl a plus or a minus. Go back to your picture to figure out which one should be which. All right, 
it seems like we might almost have what we need, but we need to remember what E is for the parallel plate capacitor. And what we said was E for the parallel plate capacitor is really Q, which is Q on the plates, plus Q on that one, minus Q on that one, Q times delta S, and then we had an epsilon naught A in the bottom. Okay, we just plugged in E for the parallel plate capacitor. All right, let's write that up here. Delta V equals Q delta S over epsilon naught A. And I think maybe now we have everything we need. We can also write this as E delta S. So the problem, 1740, says the following. It says, let E have a strength of 8.5 times 10 to the 5 volts per meter. It's desired between two parallel plates, each of area 45 square centimeters. And it's separated by 2.45 millimeters of air. That's going to be our delta S. 2.45 millimeters. And they want to know what charge must be on each plate. Hmm. Let's see. We know E. We know A. We know delta S and we are looking for Q. So in this problem, we don't really care about delta V. What we do care about is the other stuff. E was Q over epsilon naught times A. So it almost looks like we don't even need the delta S. Okay? All right, let's put in some numbers and see what we get. We've got Q that we want to solve for. So if I multiply across by epsilon naught times A times electric field, now I can plug in all those numbers. Epsilon naught is the permittiv permittivity of free space. That's 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 in SI units. Area is 45 square centimeters. But centimeters is, of course, not SI units, so we have to convert to square meters. And the way you convert is you multiply by 1. And if I put 100 centimeters down in the denominator and I put a meter in the numerator, that's the number 1. But of course, I have to square the whole thing. And then I've got E, which is already in SI units, 8.5 times 10 to the 5 volts per meter. And that should do it. We can run these numbers and see what we get. And I'll approximate it here if you guys want to punch it in your calculator. So let's see what we got. We got, this is a, a 9. That's a 45. That's a, another 9, roughly. And then we've got a 10 to the minus 12. And we've got a 10 to the 5. And down in the bottom, we've got a 100 squared, which is a 10 to the 4. So. Let's see, 9 times 9 is 81, 80 times 50 is 400, 4,000, sorry. So 
So that we get a 4 times 10 to the 3 up there. And then we've got a 10 to the minus 12 and a 10 to the 5, so that's a 10 to the minus 7. We're going to divide by a 10 to the 4. And so I'm going to say that Q has got to be approximately 4 times 10 to the, I get a minus 4 up there, I have a 4 right there, and so that's going to be a 10 to the minus 8. Units are coulombs. Did anybody punch in your calculator and tell me uh, how far off I am? Okay, so we were off a little bit. 3.4 times 10 to the minus 8. Is that what you got? Yeah. Coulombs. Does anybody else concur on that number? Yeah. That's what you got? Yeah. 